Hello everyone and welcome to the Crafty Cauldron. Today I am going to be working on a design team project. Um, this is my first design team. First time I've been asked to be on a design team. I'm super, super happy about it. Um, I am on Ali's uh, design team, the Cockney Crafter. She has a shop on Etsy and she has a YouTube channel and I will link both below this video because she's got some really cool stuff. So the thing, the thing that I'm working on is I'm using her Proud as a Peacock um, kit. I'm also using other stuff, but um, I thought I'd, I'd use this one because my idea isn't, isn't going to be just about Peacock. It's going to be about, it's not a, it's going to be about the associations that I first mm, happened upon, I guess you know, recalled uh, as far as peacocks. And the the very first thing I thought of was how um, the Greek goddess Hera, or Hera, either way, I think it's pronounced Hera, um, has an association with peacocks because um, of what, she, uh, an act that she did. I will get to it because I will tell you about it. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this journal uh, around that idea. I've already started it, but I've been waiting to do it until I felt good enough to actually do this, um, this video. So what I've got here is I already had the cover made and it's in this gorgeous teal, it's like a, a floral acanthus leaf, leaf type of thing. And this is actually a scrap left over from my, my wedding costume. My wedding costume was a Renaissance costume. And this was the, um, the um, bodice that was made. It was made out of this fabric. So I have a bunch of it le left over. So here's what I have. Um, what I have is I have four signatures already. And a lot of this paper is printed. But some of it is also... Um, dyed and all of the dyed paper I do myself. So um, I'll just read this for you. This is on the first page of the journal and it is, it's a little, uh, it's out of an encyclopedia and I cut the page out. I did not print it because it's still in copyright. So I'm cutting up the encyclopedia. It's huge. It's, it's like a world book Britannica or something and all of the volumes are there including an Alice and a couple other things but this is what I found in there. Hera was a goddess of life in Greek mythology. She was especially a protector of marriage and childbirth. Hera was important in the city of Olympia and was the principal goddess of the people of Argos and Samos. Hera was a daughter of Cronus and Rhea and the sister and wife of Zeus. The king of the gods. Her children included the gods Ares and Hephaestus. Hera, Hera and Zeus quarreled regularly. Hera was fiercely hostile to any woman, divine or mortal, who won Zeus's interest, and we all know how Zeus was. I don't know if you guys know about Greek mythology, but Zeus was not very faithful. Um, children of Zeus and his mistresses, notably Hercules and Dionysus, also suffered from her anger. Selene, will you stop? Oh, she's been ridiculous today. Stories tell how Hera sent the many-eyed monster Argus to watch Zeus's mistress Io. Zeus sent Hermes to kill Argus, who in Greek versions turned into a peacock, Hera's special bird. According to the Roman poet Ovid, Hera stripped the dead Argus of his eyes to adorn the peacock's tail. So. There you go. Argus had many, many eyes, and that's why she employed him to watch her, his Zeus's mistress, or mistresses. So the first page that I have is, is this back part is actually a print from It Capulium, and that is the, the person has that shop has so many cool backdrops and stuff. So we've got that, and then on the back of that page is like this big old pocket thing and it's been backed by a, a book page in there to give it a little bit more stability but um so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start decorating this a little more because I have waited to work on it and I, I kind of went around fished around the internet and Etsy and and uh, used some public domain images and um 
I, I printed them and put them together and, and like this one is a public domain image over the backdrop. So there's that. So what I'm going to do now is I've, I've already started with this page. This is a card that I got from uh, pens that I bought and I thought I thought the picture was really pretty. It's sort of peacock like even though it's a hummingbird. It's like a bird of paradise hummingbird. I'm not sure what it's called but the tail is magnificent. So what I wanted to do was put it on this really gorgeous purple, um, really gorgeous purple. There we are. Let's switch that around. This is mulberry paper, and apparently I was successful in gluing it to the next page as well. Oh, brother. Okay, so sorry about hitting it, guys. I whacked the camera good that time, didn't I? Whoa. So this is going to go over top of this and I added this cardstock piece because mulberry paper is very, very thin. So that's going to just be there to reinforce. But around the edge, there's a border of purple and I just thought that looked really pretty. So we're going to put that in there and yeah, I'm almost out of my Fabri-Tac, but I do have some three in one up here which I like better than Fabri-Tac. Fabri for some reason this bottle of Fabri-Tac has been really um, viscous, I guess, thick. Oh, wow, this is nice. This didn't even leak. A lot of the time I find they leak. Anyway, so I've got my three-in-one, new bottle, ready to go. Because this one's just about empty. I'm not even going to use that today, I think. I just don't even want to deal with it. So... I am going to glue this in, um, I think probably um, art glitter glue is going to be fine for this. So we're going to do that. And yeah, there's writing on the back of this, it's a card, it's like an ad. So you know what I need, I need an extra card, an extra backing, just so that the um, glue doesn't soak through the page. So hold on a second. I've got these cut up cutting mats from Walmart. They're just plastic cutting mats, but there's like four in a package or something for a couple dollars. So let's just pull that over there and then we'll slap this down here. And the cat is crazy. So now we've got this huge pocket and there's going to be a jumbo journaling card in there. So pretty. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. That, geez, that never happens until I start doing a video. What the heck? There, now my computer is silenced as well. So there we have that. So that reinforces that mulberry page and I got to cover that up as well. But that's okay. So this is in this is in Allie's kit in the, the Cockney Crafters kit. It's a little envelope. It's really pretty. I really really like it. So I'm going to fold that right now since it's just sitting there, not doing anything. I'm gonna fold it first, and then I'm gonna decide how I want to put it into the book. But I also have all kinds of other stuff. I printed some stuff from Medieval Mirage. And it was the um, medieval. Hmm, I can't remember. It's it's one of the kit add-ons, and it's got all kinds of great stuff. With um, let me show you, with like um, looks like temples and stuff that's that totally looks like Greek with the, the columns and the little decorations at the top. They've, she's also got these with Greek writing on them as well. And I didn't cut the border um, close yet because I wasn't sure where I was going to use this. But all kinds of great things. And this is, again, Medieval Mirage. If you hear a door and some noise, it's my husband. He's just taking the dog out. So here we go. Let's just fold this up. And I don't know if I'm going to put anything in this yet or not, but isn't that cute? Look at that. Oh, that's crooked. Let's just straighten that out a little bit. There we go. Is that better? Nope, not too much better. 
Um, there we go. So I rarely do craft with me videos because um, it, it's just something that, that takes a while. And generally I have trouble sitting for a long time, which is why I don't sometimes don't do my um, live streams because I have trouble sitting. Oh, for heaven's sake, stuff is falling all already. I'm gonna grab that. This is gonna have to be back. That's actually a tag. So we're going to get the little fussy cutting scissors and back some tags. I'm gonna leave that little piece of plastic in there. Oh, and by the way, this part right here that looks like this old wood, um, I put that in there before I decided to use this for the Greek goddess theme, but um, I like it. It's a paper pack page from, uh, I can't remember. I have so many paper packs, I can't remember, but it's, it looks like old wood. Isn't that cool? Anyway, old burnt wood, in fact, which I kind of like. Okay, so before we get started with that, let's just clip off these corners down here. And this is just copy paper. But I'm going to, like I said, back it. I have a gazillion piles of paper. So I'm not worried about using... And it's not wide enough. Using more. Um, that's a little wind chime you're hearing. I have a little wind chime hanging by my workspace because I love the sound it makes. A friend of mine gave it to me. She's really sweet. It's got some red agate. It sounds so amazing. I used to have this set up differently and the wind chime was swinging freely and at night we were leaving the fan on but <laughs> it would make the wind chime chime and in the middle of the night it kept me up. I mean noises noises like that will keep me awake. So I had to um, take it down for a little while and then when we rearranged I decided I wasn't going to um, leave the fan on over here like that. Let me just move this over here. So let's see here. Let's put, let's use the three in one because even though it's more bulky, this is very, very thin and um, it is, it needs a backing and the backing this is this is like cardstock, but and I I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't see it, but there's like the the paper you can see little tiny almost little pieces of, of linen in there. And again, I got this paper from a friend of my husband's, who is was you know what? I think there's still a seal in there. No, nope. no. Nope. I just need to poke a hole in it, for which I use a really nasty steel pin. Oh, there we go. All done. Whoops. Yep, that's it. That's all I needed. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this on and then I'm going to cut around it. And I'm just putting a really thin layer of glue on here because I don't want it to be too bulky, but I want it to stick. So thank you, Allie, for asking me to be on your design team. This is like super cool. I absolutely adore this kit. This peacock kit is really, really beautiful. It's got all kinds of great little extra things in it. And I'm just gonna, oh, I don't need to get it straight, I guess, but it's one of my downfalls. Is it perfect? No, well, do it over. <laughs> yeah, that's not always what happens. In the world of junk journals, that doesn't always happen. And we all know that. So I'm just going to flatten that out. And then I'm going to cut around it and then we are going to ink everything. So I want this to look like, you know, old-ish. Mm, kind of worn, kind of like it's been thumbed through, passed down. Like maybe it came from Greece. I don't know. Old. Cut around that. 
I'm a slow fussy cutter. I really am. Maybe it's because I'm kind of a perfectionist about it, but well. And I, what I do a lot of the time is I'll just cut the corners. Like if I've rounded them, I'll just cut them square on the backing paper, and then I'll come in with my little, um, my little corner rounder, and just bite that off. Wowzer! <laughs> I just jumped right across the table, didn't it? Okay, well, that's done. Got my little drawer thingy over there. Put my scissors away. And yeah, I, I'm not a real neat nick, but I have to keep things relatively clean because, I mean, you know, tidy, because um, I uh, don't have a lot of room. Probably should put more ink on that pad. It's good now. It's good for now. It'll work. And I'm using vintage photo too. I, I wanted to, I thought about using colored, but I just want it to look grungy. I don't want to necessarily have it colored. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And there's a journaling spot. I'm going to stitch around this as well, but I'm not going to stitch around it until I, um, have them all made and there's I think three of them so I probably will not do that on video we'll see what happens though a handy dandy expensive tool as Pam from the paper out post would say got it at the thrift store for like a quarter I swear I did amazing huh let's just get a little bit around that hole there we go and let's see where is the other one there it is my scissors, sorry about the reach. So most of you don't know this about me, but I have been studying mythologies for, oops. let's see, the first time I read a book about Greek mythology, and yeah, I read it like five times. I was in, oh my God, grade school, I was like nine. I used to eat books for dinner. Back in paper back there we are and the three and one worked really really well so we're gonna use that again so yeah it was just a kids Greek mythology book but it was really fun and cool and and I was just eating it up I mean the knowledge you know of myths from other countries and growing up the only real myths I came into contact with were stories from the Bible. Now, I know you'll take exception to that, some of you, because some of you think that, you know, all of the stories in there are, are true to word, but some of them are actually metaphors and they're teaching tools. So the accuracy of some of the things, I leave to history. I, I just, I don't even, it's just, I leave it to history. If they're gonna find proof, they'll find it historically, and they have. But we're not doing history today, we're doing mythology. So the Greek mythology is really interesting. And I thought it was interesting when I started reading other mythologies as well, because a lot of them are very, very similar. Um, the Christ child was born and then he died and rose again. And then in Egyptian belief, um, Isis and Osiris. Osiris was Isis's, I believe I'm right in this, I haven't read it for a really long time, but Osiris was Isis's son, grew up, got, um, uh, um let's see, parted out <laughs> and resurrected. And then there's Odin, who also died, and while he was hanging from the, the, tree of I guess you would call it the tree of knowledge was given the gift of the runes so I mean it's it's very and then he came back to life I mean it, it's very very similar All, a lot of this stuff is very very similar it's just amazing how different cultures from all over the world have different beliefs yet their details in their myths are, are very similar a lot of the time I won't say that's 
that's like an absolute because pretty much nothing is an absolute it's like when you say oh you always do this or you always do that no you don't always it's not an absolute it might be frequent there's the cat back again she was actually just announcing that she was going to jump up on top of her dresser where her food is crazy little girl so anyway yeah greek mythology is really really interesting uh, and there's roman greek and roman were very close the names were a little different like um hera's name in roman mythology was actually juno so that that's a little bit different and then there's other things like you know um, Diana, Diana, the goddess of the moon, the hunt, Athena, Athena and Apollo, brother and sister, by the way. And I believe, if I remember my myths correctly, Athena sprang from Zeus's head. Was not born like other, like humans are born. She was born from Zeus's noggin which is when i first read that when i was a kid i was just like "Ooh, that's weird <laughs> that that hurt <laughs> anyway let's get that little circle thingy right there okay another tag right there and i think there is one more of those if i can find it in this pile of stuff over here i have a whole pile of stuff over here Let's just close that up, move that aside. I'm sorry if I make loud noises. It's glass, and there's not a lot I can do about it. This is a really cool little tag that came with the Pride as a Peacock kit as well. Let me see if I can Shh. turn this light down a little bit. Anyway, there we go. It's actually purple, and... um. I really like it. I printed it on presentation paper. Make a nice, really nice little dangly tag or corner tuck, little top tuck. I don't know. You can even make a pocket out of it if you don't mind the, the round border. I don't. Oh, and I'm also going to use this card. This is an old, old card. I've already inked it. Um, a long time ago, and we're talking 15 years ago or something, a friend of mine gave me a bunch of sample cards, and um, I uh, kept them. But I thought this one went kind of well, even though it's not a tiger lily, and it's not like, you know, a peacock themed thing, I thought it was pretty and worthy of going into this journal. So, let's see here. Also, I have this. This is really cool. This is an origami paper. It's a six by six. So it makes into um, envelopes really easily and the paper is thin. So it, it's well suited to, to junk journals because the paper is so thin. Um, I don't have it glued down together like as an envelope yet because I haven't decided if I want to leave it so you can open it and journal inside of it or if I'm going to glue it shut and use it as an actual envelope or pocket or something. If I do glue it down it'll probably have a hidden pocket in the back which is something I love to do anyway I think I think I have one more peacock tag that I need to back and this is also from Allie's kit proud as a peacock in her Etsy store this it's no the, the, there's nothing wrong with the focus this card actually is is kind of misty around the outside of the peacock. I absolutely adore this. It's so beautiful. I should have printed more than one. I may actually do that, but yeah. Um, there, there it is. I found it. And this one has some really cool flowers on it. I'm going to... No, I don't need to back that one as well. This is also from Allie's kit. This little tag thing. I like it because it looks 3D already. It doesn't really need any embellishment. You can put it, like, you can make it into a belly band. You can put it as a top tuck, a side tuck, or whatever you want to do. You can just pop a hole in it and hang it as a tag. It doesn't matter. And let's just trim around this. Not a very good fussy cutter sometimes. There we 
we go. And we're going to pop those corners off. And just such a beautiful picture. They're wonderful birds. When I lived in California, I used to go and visit one of my friends. Uh, I can't remember what his name was. Um, his nickname was Galen. So we called him Galen because he preferred it. So we went to, we'd go to Galen's house. Now Galen's house was in a, in a town called Glendora, California. And it was situated on the top of a hill. And they owned like, if this is the hill, they owned like a quarter of the hill and, and the driveway came down and they owned like that whole, you know, the whole elevation from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill and where the house was. They were the house that was on the top of the hill. The house was enormous. His father was actually, literally, and I'm not kidding you, he was a neurosurgeon. Um, the house was one of those really beautiful, sprawling ranch type houses with the foot thick walls and the beams you could see on the ceiling of the living room, the huge thick beams and a uh, huge fireplace, all kinds of tile in, on the floors. The kitchen had old appliances in it, like vintage appliances in it that still worked and a gas stove for um, like a chef would have. Oh, it was so amazing. The rooms were kind of small, but it was an old house. I mean, it was built, you know, I don't know, a couple, it was probably built in the uh, 30s or 40s. It was really, really beautiful. And around the outside of the house, there was all kinds of land. They had fruit trees. They even had a persimmon tree. That was interesting. Hmm. Never had persimmons before that. And um, we used to have a fire and, you know, go out there and, and do our little thing under the moon. All of us. I mean, not just me and him. I wasn't his girlfriend and he was not my boyfriend and I had no designs on that whatsoever. He just wasn't my type, but he was a good friend. So the house next to them, which was actually down the hill just a tad, they raised, raised peacocks. Pea fowl. They had male and female, so pea fowl. And it was really, really cool because you could hear when the it was mating time and you could hear the peacocks just making all kinds of racket and they wouldn't stay in the yard. They'd come up into his driveway and into his yard and it was just so amazing seeing them and hearing them. I could just, I would stand outside his house and just listen to them making all their racket. For me, it was really cool, you know, because I mean, I grew up in downtown Phoenix, so basically, we moved there when I was three or something. And um, so basically that's all I remember was growing up in downtown Phoenix. And um, so I guess you could have called me the city girl. Although before that, our family lived on a 16 acre piece of land in, in Oregon. And that was... I barely remember that. I do remember some of it, but barely because I was so young. So when I'd go to Galen's house, it would be really fun for me and really, you know, kind of get in touch with your wilder side because he had all of this property and you couldn't see. The neighbors couldn't see us. We couldn't see the neighbor. We could hear them occasionally, but not very often. And um, it was really nice being there with, you know, the fire burning and friends and it was just it was really incredible it was really really incredible so that was that was kind of every time I think of peacocks I, I kind of one of the things that I think about is that memory of the hearing all of the, the, the racket they were making and seeing, seeing them like down the hill just a bit you know if you're lucky <laughs> and um enjoying their beauty in that way. So it was neat. Okay, so now we have three. We have a three tags, which are kind of cool. And I'm, I'm not gonna sew these right now because the thread in my machine is not the right color. I want, I want the thread to be different color. It's brown, it's like light tan right now and I, I don't want that color. 
so and this is going to be a journaling card i think i'm going to back that with some stained paper so i don't want to use the spirally one it's coffee stained paper that i of course did myself and um i think i'm just going to leave it big and cut it out like i did the other ones yeah Kind of cool. And I'm also going to use 3-in-1 for this because I really like the way it adheres and it doesn't leave bumps. It just flattens right out. It's really nice. I'm trying to get it close to the edge, but not too close because I don't want it to squish out when I put the paper together. But I like the look of the um, coffee stain paper on the backs of these. It's just too white as it is. I mean, of course, you can see that. If I had it in frame, you could anyway. Hey, somebody should just rattle my cage. Hey, you're out of frame. When I'm doing lives, live streams, my husband does that for me. He'll rattle my cage. Hey, you're out of frame. Okay, thanks. Anyway, I'm going to try to get that on the edge so I don't waste so much paper. Because even though I love coffee staining paper, it is some work. And I don't want to do it right now because it's in the middle of summer. It's like 112 outside right now. Oy. Talk about hot. I'm trying to grow my plants out there. Phew. Poor things are, they're like, <coughs> we're dying. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I don't always say, if I plant something and it dies, then it dies. What can I do about it? Basically nothing. Unless, you know, I mean, if I water it, and it still dies, then that's one thing. But if it doesn't get watered and it dies, that's on me. Or whoever's supposed to be watering. Let's just trim that little tail. Make that a little bit more neat. A little wiggly right there. But look, isn't that cool? I love the way that's stained. It almost looks like dendritic stone. So let's just trim that up. That's good. Just good. And put some ink on it. Not a whole lot. Just because I like the purple. That side doesn't need any. I'll probably stitch around that too. I'm just going to put that right there. On my computer. Because it's handy. And let's see here. What else shall we do? Okay, I think what I'm going to do is bring this book back over here. Let's move this. And I'll kind of show you what else I put in. Yeah, that I think is dry. It's a good thing I put something under it. I'm going to have to cover that with something though, I think. Ooh, but I got to show you something. I got this really cool paper. And I'm going to make some pockets out of it. It is vellum, but it, it's got like marble tech, marble on it. One side is smooth, one side is rougher. Isn't that gorgeous though? I mean, look how that looks on the purple paper. That looks so neat. And I like making big, huge pockets with this sometimes because when you do that, you can see what's inside of there. And then when you take it out, you still have the, the gorgeous background and stuff. It's really neat. Like I might do that on something like this. This is an image from Art Vintages, and um, I can't remember which kit it is. It's not exactly a kit, it's more like a collection. But there's like a whole bunch of images of women. And that's one of my papers. And this is going to be a belly band somewhere. I think I might fold it in half though. This is a page from Allie's kit. The Proud is a Peacock kit, which I have printed on a piece of paper pad paper which is where this comes from you know it didn't like the way that it looked with just this it was too cutesy for me but when I printed it out like this oh wow what a what a difference what a difference I absolutely love it you can still see all of the peacock and it kind of fades out after the border it's really neat I love it so if you have some ugly um, 12 by 12s 
cut them down, man. Cut them down and use them because, ugh. And this is the other side of it is another, is a part of one of her kit pictures. Um, <clears throat> the images are coming through really, really big for me. They're like 43 inches by 36 inches or something, which I appreciate because you can use portions of it. And this is a portion of one of the um, images from, from her kit. And I just left it really big and moved it so it would print out like this on the back of this page. So now we have that peacock feather there. And it's non-directional. This one isn't non-directional, so I could put it any way I wanted it. And it wasn't really a concern whether or not it printed right side up because of what it is. This is a public domain image. It's called The Immortals. It's a woodcut. No, actually, is that from my history book? This might be from my history book. Yeah, it is from my history book. And I just basically just tore around the pages. And then this was a misprint. I didn't mean to do it in black and white, but it's okay. I mean, I can go over that with colored pencil and it'll still work. A little short page and then a page of um, this is copy paper it's parchment but it's copy paper so it's not old or anything let's see stuff that I wanted to kind of just show you that's a public domain image and let's see what else I have in here oh yeah I have some pages from an old art history book which I thought was really cool because it shows how they built the temples and you know what the elements look like and the floor plan, which is neat too. So there's that. And then this is a Greek urn, really cool. And this is a little booklet that I made with that image you'll recognize from the far back. Where is it? Let's see, same image. It's just, this is printed on blue, um, my dyed blue paper. And this is printed on a piece of um, parchment copy paper. That I thought it was kind of neat. I could have switched it around and turned it the other way, but yeah, well, it's okay. So when I put this in, it's going to go in like this and then flip out, and then behind it either way. I'm not sure how yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in there so there's a little pocket in the back. This one is a page with a another peacock envelope, and this one I glued on backwards. This one is actually a flip down. So it flips down and opens up. Let me see if I can get that in frame. There we go. So it, it starts out like this with the paper clip on it. Like this. And then I gotta roll up my ends um, on the paper clip. I do them like this, I'll show you. So they don't scar the paper. I take a round nose jeweler's plier and I just curl the ends up like that. So when I use them, the ends don't dig into the paper. It really helps. But this this folds down. So you've got this flap, which is the flap of the envelope on the peacock colored paper. And I got these on um, Amazon. You just look for origami paper. And then it opens up, flaps down, opens up like this. You can journal on the inside. And then this is a pocket. So the whole page is pretty much interactive. And I may put more on that page, but for now, that's where I'm leaving it. And then on this page, this is actually an image from Medieval Mirage. A uh, Bohemian, ooh, I don't remember. Something Bohemian. Gosh, I'm horrible. Oh, I didn't notice there was a barcode there. I'll have to cover that with a, a little snippet. Um, or like something like this. This would be cool. Just sticking a flower on there would be neat. But I think I'm gonna put a cloth tab or, or a piece of lace or something on that because I like this. I just didn't realize that was there. <laughs> Good thing I'm looking through this, huh? More, um, this is uh, more mulberry paper. And then this page, oh my God, this is from um, Allie's, um, it's called Mocha and Chai coffee and tea dyed stuff that she did and then scanned in. I love this pattern. This is, I adore it. And I'm going to be inking around all the way around the outside and I don't want to cover it up. So I may actually put the vellum. Is there a corner? Yeah. I think I'll just put the vellum there and I'll use a corner tuck and put some really cool stuff in there. 
I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll do that right now. So I'm going to cut it on my paper trimmer because I can get a more accurate cut. I just have to make sure that it's big enough. Oops. That ain't going to work. Let's not bend the vellum. Let's go scar it. There we go vellum page. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, tape. And it's double-sided double tape because it, it just it works better. I don't You don't see any glue or anything. So I'll use my little I have a little cabinet behind me. I had to shut the door. Okay. And I'm very clumsy with this stuff. Yep, that's the blade. Okay, so that came off there. And then this one. I bet it's the wrong way. Yep, that's the wrong way. I'm just going to cut that little edge off. Throw it out. And start over with this end. So we will put it on there like put the blade down, Joe Beth. Put the blade down. As my husband would say, run, she's got a knife. And yet we're taking a little bit of the room inside the pocket away, but it's going to look better this way, so I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, kind of watching the clock because I have to do the whole insulin lunch thing in about a half hour or so. Oh, you know what I need to do first? I need to make sure that this is burnished down and stuck well. Let's move the tape and let's just peel this up with my little exacto. I could use my fingernails, but this is quicker. So there we go. Soup. And get that one off of there. Soup. There we are. Put the knife away. That's a good crafter. Oh, I like that. That looks cool. So there we go. So now we've got a pocket. And we can stick some things inside of there. And I have, where is my, I have this really cool, uh, there it is, journaling card that I have made out of a picture of from a book, a history book, and, um, or an encyclopedia, I can't remember which. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to back it, though, with some more of the paper, the um, coffee stain paper, because it just looks old. But see, that'll go right right in there and it holds really really well and some people would say i know i know there's people watching going but you use tape on a pocket you know what if you don't stick it in there real real tight it, it's it's it'll be fine it'll be fine it looks better this way i'm not going to like you know cram it down inside of there so it peels up the tape or anything but i'm going to move this book so i can put my backing on And I think I'm going to tear it because it goes with what's on the front. So let's see. Yep. And let's make it a little bit too long so I can have a little bit of room to work with here. It's already too short this way. There we go. See, that's not going to be bad. It's going to be a little wiggly, but that's okay. Using my fingernails to try to keep the border a little bit straight. This part, I don't want to tear a whole lot off of this part because it's already really narrow. It's okay. I mean, you can still use it for um, journaling on because paper. It's clear paper. So we're going to just tear this little 
straight edge off. I know this is kind of boring because there's not any like earth shattering inventions or anything going on here as far as ephemera. But I thought you guys might like to come along on a craft with me since I never do them. And I'm going to use, let's see, let's ink. Goes over there. Get out of the way. Let's see, let's throw these little itty bitty bits. And that'll save because I could probably use it somewhere else. Let's. Oh, that was squeaky, wasn't it? Yeah, my computer is right there. Because that's how much space I have to work with. Very, very little. Working on, in my head, I'm working on converting my jewelry making workroom into a, a jewelry, jewelry making workroom slash videoing and journal junk journaling room. Because there is so much stuff in there. There's just stuff I don't need anymore. Like, a, I used to save every box I got for shipping. Which was really cool because, you know, it's, it's recycling. Oh, I don't need to do the other side. But, and I'm glad I did it because some of those boxes are great for journal covers. Um, like the trifold Amazon book boxes. Oh, so good for journal covers. But, now I don't need a whole lot of them because... I am not shipping what I was shipping before. So, I'm going to make this... I'm going to bring the ink in a bit so it it's not like totally... Mm, so there's not a big white space in there. That is my ink dauber is shutting again still because <laughs> I haven't changed it. Okay, so that'll go right there. Kind of looks neat. Oh, that's just great. Mm -hmm. Stuck to my finger. I didn't glue my fingers together, but I did glue the cap to my finger. My husband would be laughing. <laughs> There we go. I'm not sure what I'm going to put on the cover of this yet. I don't want the cover to be that plain. And I don't want it to look specifically boho. Even though the colors are suited to that. And it's not a boho journal. It's a Greek goddess journal. So I'm not sure. I may just put a picture of a temple on there. Or maybe I'll find a um, public domain image of uh, a statue of Hera. And like a, a sculpture or something. And put it on there because the the statues, wow, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, cap is on. So there we have this giant journaling card. Oh, and I put um, white acrylic. I don't have gesso, um, matte gesso. So I just put white acrylic paint over the top to make it look old and, and scruffy. And so you could write on it if you wanted to. Um, this would look really, really cool with writing over the top of it, I think. And then this, of course, is for journaling. Looks like I missed a spot. Yep, I did. Let's do this. There goes that stuck sticking to my finger again. I should probably clean my fingers off, right? Huh. Uh-oh, I'm going to sneeze. I apologize in advance. Okay, I'm just going to put that over here to dry. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Can't do anything about that. Gotta sneeze, you gotta sneeze, and my allergies are kicking my butt again. Okay, so we've got the peacock feather there, and the giant pocket here. Let's see, yep, that'll go right in there. Nope, that was gonna go in our corner pocket. And the corner pocket is. Uh, Oh, I also have a short page. This is just a picture with, um, backed with um, paper, coffee paper, coffee stain paper. That's just a short pic uh, little page there that I stuck in there. I thought it was really neat looking. And then on this side, this is another page from Allie's kit. And I love it. I love her kit. It's amazing. And I'm still going to um, ink around the edges of the page too. 
There's that milk and chai, so the other one is right there. Mm, let's put that back in there correctly. There we go. So let's make sure there's no glue sticking out on the back. Sometimes if I don't look at it and I just feel it, it's more true. I don't know. So there we have that. That looks kind of neat there. The ink kind of blends in with the the staining on the picture of the staining. That looks really good. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then a Franken paper that I made, well, with strips anyway, see, of the dyed paper because I had to trim it. My dyed paper is um, it's eight and a half by fourteen because I got these like five reams of paper. <laughs> five reams. Look at that. I put another humongous. Oh, cool. I can make a bunch of big journaling cards. Neat. This is part of the kit as well. And I think it was supposed to be a belly band, but it kind of goes together because it says peacock and it says noun, and then it says a male peafowl. So I'm thinking what I might do is, is just make a, either a pocket uh, I could do, I could do like a, a louver belly band thing here and just kind of weave it in and out. I should have printed more of those too. <laughs> Glue on my finger. Imagine that. Oh, okay. So then I could do like, you know, put that in there like that. That would look kind of neat. Only not on the blue. I think I think I'm gonna put it on a different colored page, not that blue page. This is also from Allie's kit. This print is a, a page that she stained, I believe. Really cool. Ooh, that would look neat right there. Almost too long, so I can trim it. Let me see here. Let me just trim that just a little. I'm just trying to figure out which. Part I want to trim. Let's trim this. So I'm going to line those up. Into my little paper trimmer. Okay. I have a rotor trim. It was a gift. Super cool. It has never failed me. It cuts chipboard too. So I say, <laughs> don't get a Fiskars, dudes. Get yourself a roto trim, and it will cut. It will cut a lot of different things: cardboard, um, chipboard, multiple pieces of paper with no problem and no shifting. Um, yeah, you know, I, I really like that on this page better. So I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna glue it like this. Is that longer? Yeah, it is just a smidge longer. I think I'm gonna trim that off just a tiny bit. Perfect. And I'm going to glue it in like that. I don't want to get it too close to the um to the hinge because I don't want it to bind right there. Don't want it to interfere with the opening and closing. You know, if it, you get too much stuff out by the inside the, the fold, close to the fold, it, it makes it harder to open and close. So I don't want to do that because I already did this. Oh, I know what I did. I backed that whole page because I printed it on something else. So let's just do this and take that out of there. And line it up on my mat, I think. Move this. Uh, come on, man. You can't go with me. Ah! Okay. So, it goes on this side. So, we'll go, I think, into the edge of the page. Just almost. And then this one will go like this. I think I'm going to ink the edges just a tad. Everything gets ink. 
pretty much. Okay. I'm going to do this off screen over here for a minute because I just, I don't want all of the little fluffy things to rain down on my page anymore. Okay. That's cool. That is cool. Okay, now let's get some art glitter glue. I also have a different kind of glue, and you guys, if you don't know about this one, this is called Fine Line Red Top Glue. It's from dickblick.com. It is this pretty much the same as the art glitter glue. I really like it. The tip isn't quite as skinny as the art glitter glue tip, but it does have this little needle that goes down inside and helps keep it clean and airtight. And then if it gets clogged, you can always use this to unclog it, which is really kind of cool. So you've got built-in pin in the cap. I've had no trouble with it. So that's kind of neat. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. It grabs fast. It glues well. It says it glues. It's a, it says on the thing, multi-use premium quality, water-based adhesive, exceptional strength, fast drying, and dries clear. Which is true. It does dry clear because I got some on the top of this and I left it there. And unintentionally I left it there. And then when I went to um, use it again, it was there was a clear glob of glue up there. And I was like, oh wow, it does dry clear. Neat. Okay, so that's going to go right there. And it kind of squished out because I put too much, but that's okay. I love how these all look like eyes. So cool. Neat kit, Allie. Really neat kit. Okay. Let's do this one. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And I'm going to try to put it in the same location, just down the page a bit. Yep, that'll work. A little bit of squish, but that's okay. That's why I'm wearing my work shirt. Don't normally wear blues, but hey, what the heck, right? I like darker colors. That's just me. So now we have that. And if I can remember where it went, we will be great. I shut the thing. Okay, there's eight pages in each, each signature. I think it was this one. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. I am right, it was in there. I think it was, let's see here, in the middle. I think it was just right there. I think it was next to some blue though. Okay, that'll work for now. That'll work. I can always shuffle them around later. That's not a problem. I am not going to worry about it. Okay. Mm. It's 11-11. Imagine that. Okay, belly band. I think I'm going to have to trim that a bit. I like that it's already got the, what looks like inking around it. And I really like the, the little picture on the bottom. Again, this is from Medieval Mirage. It's got a little barge and the Greek writing. Very cool. Very cool. But I think I'm going to trim the top off just a teeny tiny bit. And I can use that in a collage, I think. So that's going to go in my bag full of tiny things. I'm going to need to replace this ink. I almost can't tell. Look at that. Her kits are so nice. I just love them. Okay, so do I want it here or do I want it somewhere else? Mulberry paper. Oh, I love this. So pretty. The stained paper. So cool. Pink? Mm, no, I don't like it. Let's do something else. That was blue. I think it looked good on the blue. Let's try another signature. How about that? Oh, I smell good today. I put on some patchouli oil. Ooh, smells good. I haven't worn patchouli in so long. Hey, that would that would look kind of neat right there. That would that would give that page a little bit of fanciness. 
fanciness. Yep, I'm gonna do that. So, let us do the art glitter glue and give it a good amount so it sticks well. And this is how I work. I just skip around, you know, what looks good at the moment. It doesn't have, this isn't going to be in the middle of the page. In fact, I might actually, I think I'm going to put it, uh, orient it toward the outside of the page. So I do want it top and bottom kind of equal. Yeah, that's good. There we go. There we go. Belly band. Boop. I booped. And then I'll ink the outside of that page as well because it's going to look really neat. Yeah, that's going to look really cool. Yep, I'm going to like that. So that looks neat. There's a little bit of bluish in there, but not a whole lot. So the blue of the page, because it's so pale, is bringing out the bluish in the picture. But it's not overwhelming, which is neat. So we're good there. And I have other things that I can use. I have, let's see, this is um, from, this is a page from the history book, and it is from um, the Temple of Zeus, I believe. It's a, a raised relief from the Temple of Zeus. Um, a replica of it that's in a museum, which I would freaking love to see, dang it. So I think I'm going to tear around this and make another large journaling card out of it. I may actually also um, uh, collage it. I'm not sure. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. But let's just tear around this. And I, what I do is I roll my pages because my hands cramp when I do this quite frequently. And um, nobody likes a cramp. <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking about a person. Nobody likes a cramp. Oh my goodness. So, and then I'm going to leave the white frame on, but I'm going to generously ink that because I just don't think I want that much white and I don't want to really take anything off of the picture. I'm going to move my glue before I knock it over, which would so be like me. I'm so clumsy now. I never used to be this clumsy. Ugh. Oh, there we go. Took a little bit of that off. Oh well. That's okay. Oh, this says Athena. So this is a picture of Athena. But that's okay because it's still Greek. Not going to bother me. I also have some photographs that I want to scan in of um, some, they're just like general photographs that me and a friend of mine took. Hi, Laura. She took, she, her and I went to um, uh, just over the border in Bisbee, Naco, Naco, Mexico, just over the border from Bisbee into Mexico. And um, Bisbee is south in South Arizona. There, it's a ghost town. It's really, it's not a ghost town. There are some locations like the Copper Queen Hotel that are haunted and I know they're haunted. Um, they've actually done some specials on it. But yeah, we went there and we took photographs of the location. We took, um, we went to the, the cemetery because it's over a hundred years old. And this was a few years ago, so yeah, we spent like three days there at, and we kind of stayed at um, her mother-in-law and father-in-law's house. It was so fun. We w took our cameras out and we didn't have digitals either. Back then it was all SLR and we had to have the film developed. So, um, of course, you know, you do the whole, um, uh, I'll take two prints of each frame and we we gave each other the, the prints and she uses she uses them and I use them. I've given her free reign to use my likeness. I don't care. She, I know she, I trust her. I know she won't use them wrongly or poorly. She's a very good artist. She's got a great photographer's eye. That one. Oh boy. 
So, yeah, we took some pictures of the cemetery, too, and there's a lot of, like, in the uh, mausoleum pillars and, you know, marble stuff. Oh, man, it was so fun. It was a lot of fun. Much younger back then. It was like, I don't know, God, 15 years ago. But it was good memories. It's good memories. Very good memories. Okay, more of the... Mm, where is my, there it is, the cardstock type stuff. Let's just see how much more we can get off of here. And it's not going to be big enough. That's okay though. Like I said, I got tons of paper. Let's stick that back in the little old file over here. And I think I'm going to use the textury one. Yeah, this is, I have a bunch of this too. It's huge. Um, but can you see the lines in it? I like using this one sometimes because if you if you're gonna write on it, it's already got lines in it. So if you're like me and you <laughs> you can't write in a straight line, this is really good. It's also really heavy. I mean, I don't know if you could, you could hear it. And I have a lot of this. I actually sell this in my Etsy store as well. So it is there if you want some. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Happy with it. I'm gonna have to use the paper cutter because. I cannot cut a straight line. Let's move some of this stuff around. Put my tape away. And I'm going to just cut this in half and then, uh, let's see, it is, this is 14 inches. So we're going to cut it at seven and then go from there. Oh, I love that sound. The whole, put the paper in the paper cutter sound. Kind of neat. other piece. Okay, let's see what do we got. Okay, but is that going to fit in a big pocket? Let's find out right now because I don't want to make it and then have it not fit and have to trim and re-ink and all of that other stuff. Mm -mm -mm. There's a pocket right there. Yes. Yep, it'll fit. Oh, you want to know how deep it is. Where's my pencil? Keep these zebra pencils. I love zebra pencils. They're awesome. It's those mechanical pencils. I'll show you in a sec. So I want it to be about that wide. Let's see how much extra that gives us. Make the frame. No, nope, that's okay. That's good. I like that. Okay, so the zebra pencils. Some of them, some of them that I have, oh, yeah, and frame would be nice. Focus, come on you. There we go. So the zebra pencils. This is a point five. Actually, that's upside down. And it is a zebra M301. Anyway. Some of them have like little marks up here on the little on the clip because I I put different leads in them. I put like um, uh, 2B, 4B, 6Bs, which are soft and they break more easily. But if I'm using them for artwork, then I have that option. So it's cool. So let's put that. And when I oops, sorry about that. When I store them, I store them upside down because if you put them, like if you put them inside of your cup or whatever this way, that'll break the lead off. So I just put them in upside down and I'm careful about the point. I have never stuck myself with one of those, even though they're relatively sharp, I guess. Pointy. Is this sound again? Okay. Uh, nope, nope, wrong side. There we go. And I use this kind of eraser. Oops. It's a Marie's soft eraser. There we go. I got this off of dickbook.com. They're really good for, um, they erase pencil really well. Almost, I've never had a problem with them. Almost every kind of pencil. Softness or hardness, um, the lead softness or hardness, 
and um, it also really is good for like if you have an old old postcard and it's got pencil writing on it it will erase the pencil off of the postcard without damaging the postcard of course anything you can damage anything it's just you got to be careful with it but it's easier to be careful with that eraser on an old postcard like a vintage postcard than it is if you're using like a uh, one of those polymer based erasers that's a little more rough that's why I like the, the Marie's soft eraser really great for gentle for gentle working gently with um, older papers so there's another tip for you and I'm gonna give this a generous layer of ink Again, using my vintage photo. I also like antique linen for this kind of thing. Although the, the antique linen has a lot, it looks a little bit more yellow than brown. Um, which suits me fine sometimes, but generally, I, this is my go-to. I like the antique photo. So I'm just sorry about the squeaky noise. I try not to do that. It's just, this is a glass mat, so, you know. Oh, and I can see that I'm, like, got a glare right there. <laughs> Didn't even notice till just now. Somebody should have rattled my cage, you know? Uh, okay, I'm going to have to get going here real soon, so we'll, we'll, um, we'll put this together. And then um, I'm going to put a cloth tab on it. I will probably put something, like, oh... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll decide and then I'll show you next time. Hopefully this will be a part, a three part ish video series because I really want to work on this online, um, on videos, on videos so I can show you what I do because I don't ever do that. So that looks kind of neat. And let's use the three in one. Oop. I love new glue. Don't you love new glue? New glue is great. And I'm also probably going to use some white um, acrylic paint because I don't have gesso. And um, kind of add that layer to the top of this so it can be written on easily and so it looks a little older. I might also put some ink into the gesso or paint, whatever it is, I'll just call it paint, and um, make it look a little bit more aged. I don't know, haven't decided yet, but I am going to put a tab on it, a cloth tab of some kind, and I'm probably going to have to um, go back and supplement the sticky on this. I kind of want it equal. There we go, and I think I'm going to round the corners on this as well, which I'll have to re-ink it, but that's okay. Let's put the cap back on there. Yeah, I can already see I'm going to need more glue. And I'm probably going to put some collage elements and stitch around it as well, just because I like the way that it looks when it's stitched around. But I can show you what I do, you know, when we, when we come back and we'll see what we do and see what we have. So I want to say, um, here's what we did today. We did these cards, back them, the tags, back them. This is going to maybe have a backing. I don't know. It, it's really nice to have those lines on it, though. So there's that. And then we also did the, oh yeah, like I can find that. Mm-hmm. Isn't it funny? Belly band. There. And let's see. We sewed on this really big pocket thing. I mean, <laughs> glued on this really big pocket. And we put in these two belly bands here. And was there something else that we did? I can't remember. Um, 
Oh yeah, that's one of the, that's a little tuck that I left when I put the paper together. And, uh, oh, I showed you that one. And I think that's it. I think that's it. So there we have it. It's coming together. Oh, we put in the vellum pocket as well. So let's just show you that again, the vellum pocket. See, there's no trouble taking it in and out. I'm, I'm not going to even worry about that in the least. But I may make, um, I may use that vellum paper to do um, something else. In fact, I want to because it's got that marble look to it. So here's some elements that we're going, and these will be sewn around, like I said. So I just want to say thank you for joining me for my little craft with me. And um, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for subscribing, for liking, and my previous and existing subscribers. You guys rock as well. Everybody, thank you so much for being here, for following along here. Hopefully we can go over something in this next in the next video that is a little more unique. Um, maybe a tutorial about you know how to do something that m people don't use all the time. I have a couple of ideas, so follow along, please. <laughs> okay, we will see you soon. Everybody, peace, love, and remember it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Make it a happy, crafty, and colorful one, and I will see you soon. Okay, take care guys. Bye.